granular calibration for AgNav rotary flow controller. Here we have a video of our early prototype and it uh, basically was an outboard marine impeller and RPM equals more flow and it's a positive displacement so AgNav can do their math and bigger ground speed and swath width and come up with an RPM to give the proper rate per acre. So what we have to do in the field is calibrate it to see how many times does the impeller have to go around to give us a pound. And I'll show you uh, Hillsborough's video showing calibration. And we can pull off the lower veins of the tank and just dump the calibration into a box. And that way it makes it a little easier. And then we'll just run it for a certain time and weigh the material. And on the bottom you see the veins there laying by the box and that works pretty good. You don't have to run the helicopter and it's not nearly as dusty. So we'll turn the platinum on and on the very first page we will select the test button and then we will select the UFC or universal flow controller and we will select the AgNav granular and then we will push the connect button and we are connected that looks good there are a couple of things I want to point out before we get started uh, unit US or metric, calibration time, calibration RPM, uh, calibration parameters, the material selected, and motor one or motor two, the tear weight of the box, and the start calibration. Before we start our calibration, we want to make sure that we have the right product so we can click on the little arrows to scroll through it or we can double click or long click on the material and it'll pull up a list and we can select from that list and you'll notice that I have put a two letter code on the front of the name and the pounds per acre at the end of the name we'll use that later as long as I'm here I want to show you how to add a product so click on the Add button and click on the Clear button and we'll type in the product code which is NR and the material is Natular G30 and our application rate is 8 pounds per acre then we'll say OK and if we want to delete a product we can highlight it and then select the Delete button and now we're ready to select our product so we'll select it and we'll say OK. The first thing we want to do is determine what the threshold RPM is and so um, we'll estimate that for example if corn cob rate is normally 60 pounds a minute without the flow controller. We can divide that in half which would be 30 pounds per side. We can use the platinum to find out what the revs per pound ratio is and we do that by setting in an RPM in the calibration RPM. I'm going to use 30. So I'll set in 30 and start calibration and I want to run it for 20 seconds. After 20 seconds I'll weigh the material and enter it into the gross weight and then I can read the revs per pound. And the ratio of revs per pound is going to be pretty much from 3 to 1 with 1 being the heavier material and 3 being the lighter. So the calibration is done and the weight is 3.3 .3. so I will enter that into the gross weight and when I'm finished I can read the revs per pound as 
3.03 turns to make one pound. With the corn cob, it takes about three turns to make one pound. So 30 times three would be 90. So we'll run the flow controller at 90 RPM for 20 seconds. Weigh the material times by three, and that'll give us our flow rate per minute, which should be 30 pounds per side. And if it's off, you can change the RPM. And uh, if you're not into the math, you can do the trial and error, which is pick an RPM and run it and weigh the material until you end up at 30 pounds per side. We'll click on the calibrate parameters. And we determined that our threshold was going to be 90, so we'll do plus or minus 30 with a minimum of 60, threshold of 90, and a maximum of 120. So to change the numbers, we can click on the right arrow to increase. And we can click on the left arrow to decrease. Or we can long click, and that will bring up the menu. Punch clear to clear it out, and we'll type in 90 and say OK. So I've changed the maximum RPM to 120, and also I've changed motor number 2 to 60, 90, and 120. And we're ready to start our calibration. Before we'll start, we'll check the calibration time as at 20 seconds, and set the calibration RPM to 60. Then we can start the calibration. Uh, notice the timer is running and the target RPM and actual RPM and the RPM on motor one. So our counter will count up to 20 and then stop. And we'll weigh the material. Our gross weight came out to 9.3 pounds. So we'll change that using little arrows here. And once we get 9.3 set, we can read the turns per pound, which is 2.41. We'll go into calibration parameters and long click on the turns for motor one. Clear, and we'll type in 2.41 turns per pound. Okay. And we'll do motor two as well, so long click on turns. Clear, type in 2.41. Both motors are gonna be about the same and we'll tweak it later if we need to. Next, we'll calibrate our threshold RPM of 90. So we'll change the RPM in the calibration box to 90. And then we'll start the calibration. And again, you'll notice the timer running and the target and motor RPMs and RPM on motor one. So when that finishes, we'll weigh the product and enter it into the gross weight. So we've weighed the product and it comes out to 13 pounds. So we'll adjust our gross weight using the arrow. And then we notice that the ratio is 2.50. So we'll set that in the turns per pound. Long click and clear. And type in 2.50. Say OK. And we'll do motor 2 as well. Long click. Punch clear, and we'll type in 2.50 and OK. And then we'll set our RPM for 120 using the up and down arrows. And we'll start our calibration. So we're going to weigh the material and it's going to come out to 16.6 .6 pounds. 
and we'll notice that the ratio is 2.56. So we'll enter 2.56 into motor 1 and 2. You'll notice that all the ratios are about the same, slightly increasing with increasing RPM. So if you see a number that doesn't fit, you should recalibrate that particular RPM. And if you want to enter all your data at one time, then just write your numbers down on a piece of paper. And then when you're finished with the calibration, you can go to calibration parameters and enter all the data at that time. And it's a good idea to keep a record of your settings just in case you need to go back to them. Once you finish all your calibration and you have everything set the way you want it, then you should punch on the Save button and that will save all the settings into the file manager as an INI file. And you can copy it to a USB stick or put it on your computer or transfer it to another Platinum. We want to do a test run in a training. So to do that, we need a two acre long spray run. One acre is 43,560 square feet. So if we divide 60 into that, it comes out to 726 feet for one acre. So two acre would be 1,452 feet. We can make this very area in the platinum. We'll click on the training. We'll click on application. Click on the new area. And I want to change the name, so I'll highlight that. And then click on the keyboard, clear, and I'll type in two acre run. That'll be the name of our new spray area when we generate it. Say OK, and OK again. And we'll hit the S key on the keyboard to turn the spray on. And we'll use the arrow keys to increase the ground speed. Now the uh, length of the run is based on a 60-foot swath. So if your swath is different than that, you'll have to redo the math. But for this one, we're looking for 1,452 feet. So I'll start slowing down my speed so that the uh, numbers that count up for the feet will slow down a little bit. And when I get to 1452, I will punch the S key on the keyboard to stop the spray. And that'll generate my two acre long spray run. And now I have it going real slow. And we're coming up on 1452. Spray off. Before we get started, we need to go into settings, keys, and make sure that we have motor one plus and minus and motor two plus and minus for adjustments of RPM after we do our training run. And then you can go into the application page and select settings. Select the flow controller. Make sure it's ag granular. Check the settings. And we can check our product GS vector back and bounce breaker. If we want to change it, we'll click on it. Click on the clipboard. That shows us a list. Select the GS vector back 10. OK. And check that our target rate is 10 pounds. We'll check the parameters. And the speed adjustment is at, set at 1% for the motor speed adjustment. The range is from 1 to 20. And I like to use 1%. That's usually enough. But if you need more, you can bump the switch a couple times. And you'll see the RPM change in the target RPM on your motors. Say OK. And we'll back out to the application page. Application. Old area. Check our product. Check our flow rate. Say OK. Here's our product code and the flow rate again. 
So uh, you might want to write down the settings because when you do motor adjustments, the settings will change. So that'll give you something to go back to. In the training mode, of course, we have to plug in the keyboard. And I'm going to make a left turn here so I can check my minimum and maximum ground speed. So I'll increase my ground speed. And I'm looking at the target RPM. When it increases from 60, there it is. And that's my minimum. So our minimum ground speed is 42. And then I'll increase the ground speed to I get a target of 120. Now I've set in uh, 60 minimum and 120 maximum. Right there is our maximum ground speed of 78. So if those numbers work for you, then we're good to go. And uh, we'll use Control P for autopilot and Control A for auto booms. And we'll spray this little test run. Check that our application is 10 pounds, target and application. And our actual and target RPMs are about 92, which is good. And when we finish, we'll take the box off from under the helicopter and weigh it. It should be 10 pounds each side. And if it isn't, you can adjust it by using the motor speed adjustments. And I have them on page 4. And you can increase or decrease motor 1 or increase or decrease motor 2 and uh, to get it to come out right. And then in the field, if your sides are out of balance, you can fix that with the motor speed buttons. It's a little hard to see on the ground, but if you're in real time or in the training mode, you can see the RPM change. So I'm in training mode with a ground speed of 60, and I'm going to go to setting 4. And motor 1 plus, you can see the RPM increasing. And if I go to motor 2 plus, you can see motor 2 RPM increase and motor 2 minus decreasing the RPM back to 92 and motor 1 minus decreasing the RPM to 92. So you can use these to increase or decrease your rate and equal out the balance of the two tanks. So for a review, when you spray the two acre long spray run. Each side is spraying one acre. So each side will show the weight for one acre. When you increase the motor RPM, the weight per acre will increase. For example, if one side weighed only nine pounds, you could use the motor speed button to increase the RPM. And then run the two acre spray run again and weigh the material and repeat as necessary. Typically, motor one is left side and motor two is the right side. Also, decreasing the RPM will decrease the weight per acre. When you're in the field, you can check the total acres that you've sprayed. If you have for example, 560 pounds in the spray tank. At 10 pounds per acre, you will spray 56 acres. If you only spray 50 acres, then the rate is too high and you need to reduce the RPM. If you spray 60 acres, you are spraying too light and you need to increase the RPM. Often one side will run out too early. Look at the total acres sprayed. If you are spraying light, then increase the site that still has product. If you're spraying heavy, then decrease the site that is empty. Remember, increase motor one or two to increase the flow rate. Decrease motor one or two to decrease the flow rate. Thank you very much.